Hi, I'm Hassan, the lecturer here at the Institute of Medical Education, and today we're going to go through a GAMSAT Section 3 Physics, and more specifically Relativity, uh, unit, which comprises two questions. So before we move on, um, I'll give you some time just to have a read of the stimulus and the two questions. So you can pause the screen and have a read of the stimulus. And the first question, question 77. And now you can pause to have a read of question 78, the final question. Okay, great. So now that you've had a read of the stimulus and the questions, I think it's important to note here that the Lorentz transformation, thank God you don't have to actually um, try to figure it out from first principles um, or derive the equation. It's great that they've given you the equation here. And pretty much you just have to use the equation. So that's all you have to do. I think the the skill here for this sort of question is how do you manipulate these big numbers with scientific notation and try to get an answer without a calculator? Because remember in the GAMS app, you're not afforded the calculator. Because this would be so easy if we had a calculator. But obviously, the GAMS app is not easy for that reason. So the key information to read from this stimulus is obviously the equation and the fact that the U prime or the U dash is the velocity in the new reference frame where u and v are the velocities in the original reference frame. So that's important to note, and we'll go through why in the first question. But also note as well that the speed of sound, uh, sorry, the speed of light um, is 3 by 10 to the 8 meters per second. I mean, if that was the speed of sound, that would be pretty fast. But it's the speed of, it's the bit of speed of sound. So c is 3 by 10 to the 8 meters per second, which you should know anyway. Okay, so the first question. An observer is standing on the deck of a space station watching two spaceships go by. The first ship is traveling at 2 by 2.25 by 10 to the 8 meters per second, while the other is moving at 2 by 10 to the 8 meters per second. How fast is the first ship moving relative to the second? So it's important. There's a couple of important information, key information you need to know here. So the fact that both of these velocities are positive means that these ships are traveling in the same direction. So that's important because we need to know whether or not they're going in the same or opposite directions because it influences um, the either the sign we're going to put in front of here. Is this a positive or negative? Because that's going to make a difference when we substitute them into the equation. So that's the first thing to know. They're both positive, which means they're both going in the same direction, which is fantastic. Now, the second piece of information we're told is how fast is the first ship moving relative to the second? So we know straight away, if we're trying to find out the new velocity, which is in a new reference frame, we're trying to figure out here how fast the first ship is moving, so that's going to be u dash, based to the second, uh, relative to the second, which means if this is going to be u dash, then u is going to be the speed, the original speed, traveled, which we're looking at, the observer at standing at the deck, at 2.25 by 10 to the 8 meters per second. So we're going to try to figure out what the new speed is based on the observer, or well, um, relative to the second ship. So what we're going to do now is we're going to substitute 2.25 by 10 to the 8 as u, and v as 2 by 10 to the 8 meters per second, and c squared, or c as 3 by 10 to the 8. So to do that, Let's just pull out a, a whiteboard here. Uh, let's do, where are you? Um, okay, I'll get my screen out. Okay, so let's draw. So let's just write the equation out again. So u equals u v over 1 minus u v over c squared. So if we're going to substitute now our values, so let's substitute u, which is going to be 2.25 by 10 to the 8 minus our v. So that's going to be 2 by 10 to the 8 over now 1 minus, so it's going to be now times, so let's put it in brackets just to make it a bit clearer, 2.25 by 10 to the 8 minus 
So you might want to put it in double brackets, but uh, sorry, we're multiplying here, sorry. So times 2 by 10 to the 8 over c squared, and we know speed of speed of light, 3 by 10 to the 8 squared. So what we have here is a whole bunch of big numbers, and we've given it in scientific notation. We're not allowed to use the calculator and the GAMSAT, so we have to use our brain here. Now, it harps back to the foundations of mathematics. How do you manipulate scientific notation if you're adding, subtracting, or if you're multiplying or dividing? So I might use a different color pen here. We'll use maybe red. So it's important to note that when you're subtracting or adding a scientific notation, if they're in the same unit or the same number, it's a lot easier. So if they have the same scientific notation, all you have to do is just subtract 2.25 from 2, and you're left with this. So it's going to be 2... Okay, sorry. So it's going to be 2.25 minus 2 is 0 0.25 by 10 to the 8. Now we put that over 1 minus. So when we're looking at multiplication and division of scientific notation, if you're multiplying scientific notation, it's just whatever the power is, if it's by base 10, obviously, times 10, it's going to be 8 plus 8. And if you're dividing, it's going to be, well, if it was division, it'd be 8 minus 8. But in this instance, we're times. So what we're going to do is first we have to times 2.25 by 2. So it's important to note that quick math, 2 by 2 is 4, 2 by 2 and a half is 5, therefore 2 by 2.5 is going to be 4 and a half. So you've got 4.5 by 10, so we're multiplying, so it's going to be 16, so 8 plus 8 is 16, divided by, so we have now 3 by 10 to the 8 squared, so if we've got 3 squared, it's going to be 9 by 10 to the power of, remember 3 by 10 to the 8 squared is the same as saying 3 by 10 to the 8 times 3 by 10 to the 8, which means it's going to be 8 plus 8, so 16. So we're left now with this equation. So I might change colors again. I might use a green now. So we still have big numbers. But the good thing is, now that we've got numbers we can work with because they're both um, pretty much in the same unit here, what we can do is uh, the same scientific notation. Remember. If you're going to divide scientific notation, it's just the same as minusing. And I guess they're the same anyway, so you can just subtract that. So now you're going to be left with 1 minus 4.5 divided by 9. So 4.5 over 9 is obviously 0 0.5. And it's 1 minus 0 0.5. So that's going to be so 1 minus 0 0.5. So what you're going to be left with is... 0 0.25 by 10 to the 8 over 0 0.5, which is the same as if we just multiply both sides by 2, it's the same as 0 0.5 by 10 to the 8. And finally, the answer is going to be the same as if we move them around. 5 by 10 to the 7 meters per second. So if we go back now to our original question, we're asked, I'll just remove the screen, we're asked here whether or not, uh, sorry, we're asked here how fast the ship is moving relative to the, the first ship relative to the second. So we've just calculated that the answer is going to be 5 by 10 to the 7 meters per second. And we did all that without a calculator. So look, usually um, Acer loves to uh, introduce questions that warm you up. So this is kind of like a warm-up question for the GAMSAT. Next, you've got to use a bit, of your, a bit of your brain for the next one. So the next question is telling us that with changing reference frames, there's also changes, it also changes the length of the object depending on the direction of motion. So you use this formula here. So L is going to equal, well, that's the 
length of the object, so that's the new length, is going to be the original length, square root 1 minus the velocity squared. So this is the velocity from the new, remember, it's going to be from the new reference frame. So don't get confused here. Divided by the speed of light squared. So what we do when we read this equation, uh, when we read the question here, it says the observer on the space station observes another two ships. This time they're moving towards each other. Now this is important. If the two ships are moving towards each other, it means one ship's going in this direction, one is going in this direction, which means they have opposing velocities. So one's going to be positive direction, one's going to be negative direction. So remember that. So it says the first ship is moving at 0.5 speed of light, so half the speed of light, while the other is moving in the other direction at 0.6 the speed of light. These are moving very fast. So given that both ships are 100 meters in length in the stationary reference frame, how long does the first ship appear to the second? So in the stationary reference frame, it's going to be 100 meters. And what we're asked is how long the ship, the first ship is going to appear to the second. So we want to find out what v squared is here. So to find out first the v squared, we have to find out from the new reference frame. So obviously it's going to be from the second ship. So the second ship. So we've got to first calculate this. And then we're going to substitute the values into this equation to find out what the new L value is, what the new length is from that reference frame. So to do that, just remember first, we've got to assign negatives and positives to these ships. And the good thing is, it doesn't matter which ship you assign negative or positive to, it's going to equal the same answer in the equation. And the reason for that is, if, for example, we assign minus 0.5c, so assign this, so they're going opposite directions, and this is going to be positive, minus 0.5c minus 0.6c is, is equal to minus 1.1c. And if you were to swap it around, minus 0.6c minus 0.5 is the same. It's going to equal minus 1.1c. So it's the same. But in this instance, they're saying how long does the first ship appear to the second? We're going to have u equal minus 0.5. So we're going to give it a negative. So if we bring out our um, whiteboard again, let's bring out whiteboard. Uh, I might remove this as well. I'll just get rid of all of this. Our whiteboard now. Uh, where is it? So, what color do I use? I'll use a nice, start off with a nice, uh, I'll do black. So, let's just write out the equations first. So, we've got U. So, that's the from the new reference point is equal to u minus v over 1 minus uv divided by c squared. So let's substitute our values. So our u, remember, is going to be negative 0.5c because it's going in opposite direction to the other object, minus 0.6. So it's positive 0.6c divided by 1 minus, so we've got, let's put brackets, minus 0.5c times 0.6c over c squared. So let's get the red pen out now and play around here. So we know this is going to equal minus, so 0.5 minus 0.6 is minus 1.1c divided by 1 minus, so we've got here, if we're multiplying c and c, it's going to be c squared. So we can remove these from the equation. So we're going to be left with 1 minus minus 0 0.5 times 0 0.6. So it's a times 0 0.6. So that's going to be, if you know your quick math, it's going to be 1 minus minus 0 0.3. So it's going to be pretty much 1 plus 0 0.3. So what we're left with is minus 1.1 1 
c over 1.3. And because we like working with easier numbers and easier fractions, we can just times them both by 10 and we're left with minus 11 over 13c. So this is our v or well from that reference point so it's going to be our u dash e that's going to be our new reference point so that's our u dash so if i remove this and start with the next equation so we're trying to find out the length now from the new reference point the length of the ship from the reference point um, relative to the second ship so if i just remove these and we start the new equation so remember the equation for the length is l so new length is the original length square root 1 minus v squared over c squared where our remember u dash or our v is equal to we said negative 11 over 13 so negative 11 c over 13 so let's answer this now and substitute our values and remember also our L0 is equal to 100, which was given to us in the question stem. So 100 meters. So if we substitute values now, so let's do a nice, pretty, so a red color. Uh, okay, so L is going to equal. One hundred meters square root one minus so v squared. So we just put it in brackets for now. Minus eleven over thirteen c squared over c squared. So that's what we're working with here. Now again, we've got to use some basic mathematics and some foundational mathematics to find the answer. So it's the same as saying 100 square root 1 minus, so let's just work this quickly. So c squared, c squared, we can take this off. So what we're left with is minus 11 over 13 squared. So what I would do is I will try to figure out what this equals inside and then I'll subtract it and then I do the square root. So it's the same as saying, this is the same as saying, okay, so what's 11 minus squared? So obviously 11 minus squared is about 120. So in obviously in the GAM set, you don't have a calculator. So let's say it's about 120. 13 squared, I'd say it's about, if it's 13 times 10 is 130, then 13, 13, 13. That's like another 36. So it's about 160. Let's say it's about 160. So what we're left with is 120 over 160 is the same as 3 over 4. So it's 75%. So, so it's 75. So you can rewrite this as 100 square root 1 minus 0 0.75 which is the same as 100 square root 0 0.25, which is the same as 0 0.25 to the power of 0 0.5. So that's what you should remember when you're going from a uh, uh, from, from this to um, squared, so when you're going from square root to squaring, or in this instance to the power of 0 0.5, you're just flipping it. So I know that this answer, based on the basic principle that 0 0.5 squared is 0 0.25, so the reciprocal. I know that the reciprocal of this is going to be 0 0.5. So the answer is going to be 100 times 0 0.5, which equals 50 meters. So if you if you're having trouble figuring out how uh, this equals 0 0.5, I always just think of it this way: 0 0.5 squared is going to equal 0 0.25, which means the reciprocal or one over, which is the same here, is going to be 0 0.25. So with powers of 0 0.5, if you need, if you're looking for a trick to um, pretty much do this straight away in the GAMSAT. 
Um, I would memorize what square root, say, 1 equals, what square root 0 0.5 equals, square root 0 0.25. Memorize the obvious ones. What's square root of 9? What's square root of 81? What's what's square root of 64? So if you memorize those for the GAM set, you won't have to think about it in the exam. So from now, hopefully, one big take home as well is that you're going to know straight away that square root of 0 0.25 is 0 0.5. So what we end up with is... 50 meters. So if we go back now to our, uh, if we remove everything here and we go back uh, here. So the question says, given that both ships are 100 meters in length in the stationary reference frame, how long does the first ship appear to the second? We just calculate it's about 50. So the closest answer is going to be 55 meters. So we've literally just figured it out some pretty hardcore Lorentz transformation relativity, relativity questions without a calculator. So it's just utilizing and manipulating um, foundational maths, basic math principles of scientific notation and um, conversions with uh, uh, square roots and uh, these sorts of things. So mathematics, it can be annoying and daunting, but it can be done, especially for the GAMSA if you learn these little tricks. So if you do have any more questions, let us know in the comments below. If you want to ask other things, you can contact us directly and we'd love to help you. Thanks for, thanks for joining in. Bye now.